Hello everyone and welcome to I think this is Losers Bracket semifinals match game six in the in the Improvement Cup. The Improvement Cup is a tournament that's been going on for the last uh, for the last month, where a pro player teams up with some intermediate players and we see how much the intermediate players can improve. This is going to be between Lunacy and 2H. I assume 2H stands for something, but I don't know. And this is on the map, Plateaus. What I like about this tournament, there are a lot of unique maps. And I'd like to see more of these in the future. Oh yeah, this map Plateau. Players start in this crater-like area. Where there's some good resources on top. There are also some good resources. But this is going to be a very hard map to defend. And a very aggressive map. I'd like to see a lot of good aggression. Let's introduce the players and the teams. We have red, teal, and green. So down in the bottom right, we have... Playing as the Ethiopians, Derp. In the pocket position, we have Idafix playing as the Turks. I know Idafix quite well. Or at least him playing. And we have, in green, Akino playing as the Saracens. I also know Akino quite well. I've played many, many, many games with Akino. I think he's more known for Arena. But he plays both maps. For the 2H team, we have Pela playing as the Portuguese. In yellow, we have Yemi playing as the Celts. And in purple, we have Wolf Genghis playing as the Franks. So only two of these players I know pretty well and their skill level. Akino and Idifix are around 1700 rated. I think Akino might be 1800 rated. The rest of the players, I'm not sure what their skill level is. And let's talk a little bit about the civilization matchup as players are scouting around. It looks like we have a boar steal from Akino. And he's going to steal two sheep as well. What a great pickup for Akino at this skill level, intermediate. It's not the easiest thing to steal a boar. Especially when you don't have an eagle scout. But this looks to be a successful steal. And this was a steal from Yumi, the Celts player. So Yumi's going to be down one boar. And he's still scouting around with the scout looking... Hey, where's my boar? Well, it was stolen. And Akino's going to get that back safely. Let's take a look at the players, their positions, and the civilizations. We have Yimi, um, sorry, Dart playing as the Ethiopians. Ethiopians are extremely strong in the flank position. Unfortunately, there's the gold forward for, for Dart. Two stones in the back. We're going to take the back wood line. And I expect to see maybe men at arms into archers in the pocket position and it must be said that these pockets are not very safe so i do expect a lot of aggression from these pockets but in the pocket position we have idafix playing as the turks i expect to see scouts maybe we'll see janissaries or maybe we'll see knights and camels and in late game maybe we can see cavalry archers the turks have a lot of options to go for this is a fairly strong team game civilization in my opinion and akino playing as the saracens now, Saracens are not the strongest team game civilization until they get to late game. Their archers will be serviceable. Their, knight, their uh, knights and camels will be serviceable in the Castle Age. But really what you want to get is you want to get to the Mameluke. And Pela's going to steal that boar back. So Akino taking a sweet time luring his actual boar. Oh, 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 I thought that boar was going to get one more hit. And it looks like Pela will steal the boar of Akino. So that'll even things up. Pella is in fact going to have three boar, so he'll be a stronger flank, and his ally Yimmy will be a weaker pocket due to the, those boar steals. Pella playing as the Portuguese, great team game civilization, due partially due to the line of sight bonus, as you can see right here. Very strong bonus. As well, all their gold units are discounted, so that'll help with archers or knights or monks or siege or whatever you decide to make. See if this villager is going to be able to lure that boar. Yes, he will. And yeah, I like the Portuguese a lot. Celts, good civilization in general. They should have a little bit of trouble in the Castle Age because they don't get bloodlines on their knights. We probably won't see archers for them. But if they get to the late game, Wode Raider will be great, especially on such an open map as this. And their siege will be great. Good economy for the Celts. In purple, we have Wolf Genghis playing as the Franks. Great civilization. Scouts will be great. Knights will be great. And uh, in the late game, Paladins will be great as well. So good civilization. So overall, I definitely would prefer slightly... I think I would prefer 2H's civilizations. Celts I'm not crazy about. 
We're going to see a Drush from Pella. And it looks like a lot of the players, at least on the 2H side, going to be walling the map. And I don't know where these walls are going to be going. You're going to have to wall here, and then you're going to have to wall there, and then there, and then there. And no. that's so much to wall. And these walls are not very strong, too. But I don't like that decision to wall all of the map. I think it's better you're playing as the Franks. Just go for scouts. Don't worry about the walls as much. No. And let me jump this to 60 speed. Alright. So let's see if these militias can kill a villager. Perhaps if that villager gets trapped, no quick reaction from Akino, so that villager's gonna get out of there. And it's gonna be walled behind. And these militia are gonna move around. Love to see the box formation on these militia. Just be there. And they're not going to get it, be able to get past that town center. At least they shouldn't. The scouts actually... Oh, there's no villagers under the town center, actually. Okay. Akino paying close attention. Might be the highest skill player in this game. Men at arms being made from Derp. And this will be great. Because they'll get through those walls in no time. Wolf Genghis doesn't look like he's gone for a fast castle despite all of these walls. No. Only up on 23 population. No. A lot of wasted wood on these houses. That's 100 wood. Now we're going to come up behind. Derp, of course, gets plus two line of sight on his tower, which you can see here. Nice bonus. And this is a good opening for Derp. At home, perhaps he can add some archery ranges a little bit later on. Hela has not seen anything on Akito's map. However, since the pocket and the flank are so close together, these militia are going to be able to go in. Uh, <laughs> Idafix was not expecting this at all, as this villager is going to get caught out. However, could be losing these militia to the town center. There's not a lot of villagers under there, but there are a few. And that militia is going to get away, but badly damaged, and they're going to go to the wood line. Welcome to the channel, Discern. Welcome. Glad you made it. This villager is all by himself. Is he going to get trapped? No, he's going to be okay. We have four villagers over here. Um, guarded by two scouts, that'll be great. Good defense. Oh, not a good... Oh, 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 gonna lose the scout! Oh, that was not... That was not nice. What are you doing? What are you doing? So, two mistakes here. Losing that scout right away. Not attacking with all the scouts at the same time. And also, these villagers are just chopping wood happily on the wood line. But they could be brought in for, for some combat. So, that was not a nice cleanup from Idafix. And good Dark Age rush from Pella. Didn't kill any villagers, but did kill two scouts and delay the pocket quite a bit. That's the most important player to delay, of course. Dang, if there was only a sweet scoreboard you could use, rip me. I could use a scoreboard, no, but there's no. no point in using a scoreboard because I'm not casting a whole set. So I like to keep the overlay nice and clean, if possible. Interesting towers. Those villagers battered through the palisade walls of Wolf Genghis on the right side. And I like this move. Gonna wall up that tower. That's a great tower. It's gonna take away a farm. We'll kill this villager if this farmer insists on taking these vegetables. There's only 10 food left, though. I guess he might as well take it. And those men-at-arms getting through those walls real quick. Again, I just didn't like these walls from Wolf Genghis. They're too big. No. And they're downhill, too. First two players up to the next age will be Yemi and Pella. So both players on the 2H team. However, this is problematic. We have almost no army out from Pella. And Pella's getting pressured pretty heavily by these Saracen crossbows. Saracen cross um, archers, plus one attack versus buildings. They should be able to get through these, this palisade qu gate quite quickly. That's another oversight. So stone gate gonna come up. The stone gate won't last forever either. That's only 156 HP on that stone gate. One villager gonna go down. Yeah, that gate's gonna go down instantly. Finally, the Saracen's team bonus making some... Uh, being a, being a pretty good asset for this team. Looks like the men-at-arms might get a few villagers, but now these villagers are vulnerable for derp. So that might be an overextension. No. Iofix is going to come into the rescue with his scouts. That is if he can micro his scouts properly this time. Here he comes. And some villagers going down for derp. I think these scouts should be able to turn the tide of this game. And this could be a lot of villagers down for Wolf Genghis. Some of these villagers are, are already low. And we could see another tower coming up from Derp. And it's going to be right in the same position. This is a terrible tower. 
if this gets up for Wolfgang, us because that'll take away the gold. But we do have a knight from Yumi. We have two knights from Yumi, and that, that'll be enough. Knights will destroy everything. And take a look at Wolfgangus's population. 28 villagers for him. And right across, 33 villagers for Derp. The so Derp's been pretty good. What he needs to do is add some towers or some walls at home. He's got some small walls, so I guess add a few towers. And he'll be okay. Wolfgang has taken some stone over at Yumi's base. Looks like Pella was able to defend. Let's check the populations of these two flank players. We have 32 villagers for Pella. And for Aquino, oh, keep switching. We have 36 villagers, so that's about even, considering it's going to be a three villager uh, difference once Aquino goes up to the castle age. However, these archers are still pressuring, and that's going to keep the crossbows at home. Fairly even on the north side, assuming that a decisive fight doesn't happen in the next few minutes. However, we do have the knights from Yemi coming around. Yemi's done a great job if he's going to be able to clean up these archers and as well clean up the villagers down at the bottom side. And we have five knights in the area with plus one armor. Kilts, of course, don't get bloodlines, but I don't think it's needed for this fight. And those archers are going to get trapped. We have a few knights down um, on the other side of the, of the archers, which is not good. And great cleanup. Great cleanup from the 2H team. Now, Aquino is going to be in some trouble. He's going to have to mass a lot more, um, a lot more archers. He's going to get some of these walls up, which will help in his defense. He's got a nice Saracen market up. But he's going to have some trouble. He's going to need some support probably from his pocket. Idafix? Idafix? He's got a few knights and camels coming out across the map. Oh, if he is going to be going for three town centers. Oh, two town centers. My bad. I'm going to get the market for cartography. And this is not great for Aquino's economy, as his lumberjacks and some of his farmers are idle. These military buildings could get destroyed as well, releasing all of the crossbows within. There's quite a few. Take a look at the other pocket. Any additional town centers for Yimmy? Only one extra town center. The pockets are on even playing fields as far as economy. A few more villagers for Yimmy. Not a whole lot of aggression on this bottom right side. I guess because these knights decided to come back towards Aquino. Looks like that archer range. Both of them got on garrison. Because one was about to go down. And now Aquino has no army. And if you're in Aquino's position, what do you do? I think you add a siege workshop. No, go to add a town center. That's a uh, decision that might bite Aquino. That town center is not going to protect that gold too well. No. So what the camels do is prevent the knights from raiding in under the town centers, but these archers still can go around the edge of the map, and on this kind of map, the archers could be de devastating. There will be no gold collected for Aquino. And this wood is already looking messy. Finally, we see a siege workshop from Aquino. He's got to use his Saracen market to get some a lot of more resources. We'll have to put some more villagers on these farms. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. And now the knight and crossbow combination moving over to Idafix's base. Idafix is going to have to run. And he'll probably have to build a siege workshop of his own. The 2H playing this game quite well. I didn't like Wolfgang's play at the very beginning of the game. But Yimmy's been awesome this game. What a great pocket he's been. He'll have a problem when transitioning to another unit, but... With them so far ahead in this game, I don't think it'll be that much of a problem. Yimmy gonna get plus two armor. And now they can raid on this gold. That's not enough knights and camels to clean this up. But these uh, knights do have to stay with the crossbows. We have even more crossbows coming in on this side. And I think this fight will definitely go in the hands of our 2H team. No. Yeah, that was a bad fight to take. I think Idafix should know better than to take that fight. These four no. villagers are going to have to retreat. This is a big mess in Idafix's base. Akito, of course, can't help at all. Akito doesn't even have any military production buildings aside from a siege workshop. And we have even Pikeman. Pikeman was made by Derp. Oh, that's right. He's playing as Ethiopian. But still, that won't help out too much. There's so many crossbows.
Derp gonna help out with some crossbows too. That is what is needed. I think we need to see a siege workshop. If they do end up uh, trapping this army, they could clean it up. And I think Pelos realized this, which is why they're gonna get out of there. And this is a big advantage for 2H, in my opinion. The economies of Idafix and Aquino have been set back. Meanwhile, Pelos has been safe at home. Yimmy's been safe at home. Looking really good for their team. So taking a look at the villager numbers. Oh, let's keep an eye on this fight. This uh, this battle that could happen though. Villager numbers 68, 60, 44 for 2H. For the other team, 67, 52, 44. That's what, maybe 10, 15 villagers for our 2H team? Ballist ballistics! Ballistics coming in for these crossbows. Now remember the Ethiopians crossbows, they do fire faster. These Turks, Knights, do get bloodlines. They are missing oh, an ex additional armor, so that does hurt. We have Meganels here. Let's see if they can get a big shot. Yes, gonna get one shot off, killing a lot of crossbows. Finally, we do get cl the cleanup. This is exactly what our Lunacy team needed. However, these crossbows are kind of escaping. They need to go chase them down. This would be a big pain if these crossbows retreat to the corner of the map. And it looks like they've forgotten about these crossbows. They're going to be able to escape. Wow. So those crossbows can come in and fight another day and perhaps get a good raid. So big oversight from the Lunacy team despite taking a good victory in that fight. Looks like the 2H team hanging around too long in this area, not being able to reinforce. But that said, their economies back at home should be fairly great. So we'll add military later. We have three town centers from 2H. I assume most players have three town centers at least at this point. I don't have the town center um, on, no, my, um, no. on my spectator overlay quite no. yet. Perhaps no. I'll get it for next cast. Looks like the right flank's doing uh, not the best in this game. And Akino, is he going to make another army? Yeah, he's going back into crossbows. So he's going to stick to Arbalest. Unfortunately, he'll have to rebuild his entire force. There he is. Looks like Derp is going to go for a raid, but there's a castle in the north. Franks, of course, have cheaper castles, but their unique unit's not going to be very valuable. In this particular matchup, anyway. No. So now it's time for the Lunacy team to try to get a raid off of their own. Oh, this will be a good area to hit. But if this castle goes up, that'll help to lock down a lot of this area. Unfortunately, this gold no. is not going to be very safe. 2H can take this gold over on this, this side. And it's going to get a good raid. No. No. The Wolf Genghis is already dropping to the lowest villager count in this game. And this game is still fairly close. I mean, between the other players, no. a total villager count's about the same. And Pella's gonna have to make a transition. Or he's just gonna have to stick to his weaker Celt Knights. He's gone up to the Imperial Age. Pella's also in the Imperial Age, so we have a, a tech advantage no. for our 2H team. We'll see if they're gonna be able to make use of this. This, one, this side is the side I'm really no. concerned about, actually. I think they'll be able to clean up on this side with those knights. But with Arbalus being done from our Portuguese player and Bombard Cannons will be out soon as well. I don't know how the Saracen player is going to handle this, especially with this big hill here. Let's see if he can get a good Meganel shot. No, it's not going to be good. That's terrible. Yimmy going to upgrade to Cavalier, even though they don't get the last armor. And Cavalier should be able to clean this up. No, More players no. going up to the Imperial Age. Derp and Aquino now going up. No, no. We no. see Idafix going up? I think we need to see Idafix going up. Remember all those raids earlier on really hurt him out. I think he's making the university now to go up to the Imperial Age. Aquino's gotta hold on the side somehow. What's the best thing you can do in this situation? Well, I don't know. Aquino's not gonna have the support of his pocket. No. 
The best thing Derp is doing right now is keeping these Cavalier at home. No. Preventing the Cavalier from no, going out no. on raids. And he needs to continue to do that and continue to push in. Oh, that's annoying. Every time something happens in the overlay, it says no. And these crossbows should be fairly good. Remember, they fire faster. And these, with these Cavalier not getting the last armor upgrade, these are just a little bit stronger than knights. They have two more attack, 20 more HP, but that's it. And that's too many crossbows. Too many crossbows to handle. We even have some pikemen being mixed in. And the Knights of Idafix coming in. No. So what Derp should continue to do, he should continue no. to add army, but should also keep adding siege and no. continue to push in this area. So this transition for the Celts really no. hurting their team. Yimmy's Cavalier is just not working. He needs to go into Wode Raiders. And I don't see him taking any stone at all. This is gonna, probably going to be his first stone taken of this game. This is terrible. But with that said, Pella is pushing in with capped rams and Arbalest. Spangano is going to go down instantly. We have Arbalest being upgraded for Aquino, and this could be the saving grace. He'll need a little bit of help to take down these capped rams. That's why he's making Manganels. Army count. 40 to 40. It's dead even. And this would have been a great area for Pella to push in. Instead, he decided to push in on the front. I would have taken this area out. Takes away a gold, the town center. Military production in the castle. Going through the front, you're going to take out some houses. Not a whole lot more. Alright, so about even. I think that Akino should at least take the hill if he's going to take this fight. No. One of the big differences in this game could be the Portuguese bombard cannons. And all three players for the 2H team in this area. That was a terrible fight for Aquino, but he's going to get some more crossbows from Derp. Derp is doing great now. Derp is a powerhouse. No. Derp was pushing down here. Now he's pushing in the north. Again, the Celts player, we need to see something more from them. We're going to see Onager. It's going to be some time. So now the tables have turned. 2H needs to hold until their pocket can do something. No. Can make their upgrades on their siege units. Wolf Genghis is going to go into Cavalier, so it will take over the role of the Cavalier of Yimmy, but it'll be much stronger. Got tons of stables. Yimmy on 102 villagers, still needs to add a few more. Idafix only on 90. He must have sustained a big raid that I didn't see. A lot of these farmers are idle, a lot of bodies. Idafix going down a lot in the villager count. And a lot of rams, a lot of rams for Aquino. This will be great. Most of these units are pierce ar units that do pierce armor damage. And these rams should be fairly effective. And this is going to be hard to stop. What we need to see, we need to see, uh, we need to see siege onager, and Yemi's making it. That upgrade will be done. We'll see a few siege onagers. Can they be protected? Is the big question. And Yemi's going to try to protect them with halberdiers. So a lot of this is going to come down to the micro. Trebuchet is going to set up on the castle. If these onagers can make their way around over to this side, especially where they need to go, they need to go right here. Then perhaps they could take out the rams and maybe the arbalest. That's a far way to go for the siege, and they'll be up unprotected in that uh, in that time. Give me on 130 villagers. That's pretty good. This is a nice center control for Yumi and Wolf Genghis. I really like that. No. This area is not that important, actually. In fact, it's all downhill. I mean, there is stone and gold here, so it is important. Siege Ram being made from Aquino. So we desperately need to see a cleanup of this army, or otherwise they'll be getting into Pale's economy. Council coming in. There's those siege onagers, but they need to find the right angle. And they need to be protected. And if they get picked off by these cavalier, that'll be horrible. Still missing a few upgrades on the siege onagers. They need the last few upgrades, but more importantly, they need to be protected. Oh, this will be terrible. I'm gonna pick off those three siege onagers. They need to be doing damage versus the rams and arbalest. We need to see siege workshops here. From Yumi. Halps will protect the trebuchets for the time being. 
But again, they need to be here. That castle's gonna go down instantly. If that castle goes down, then the town centers will go down. Then a lot of villagers will die. Wolf Genghis is starting to come into this game. He's got Paladin upgraded. No. Still will have his hands full with dirt. No. Oh, great raid. Look at this raid. Oh, boy. Oh, boy. The Siege Workshop will have to work overtime. In order to prevent more villagers from dying. What a great game. No, no. It looks like Wolf Genghis is, in fact, going to be the hero. Is he? Is he going to get this cleanup? It's going to be close. Paladin are so much stronger than Cavalier. Where are those Siege Onagers? Okay, so it looks like Wolf Genghis is going to be the hero and not Yemi. Yemi, do something! Yemi's army is so not mobile. Not really favored on this map at all. This was Black Forest, and of course the Celts would be the strongest in the late game. With how open this map is, these Siege Onagers just, just can't get into the right position. I, I would love to see Yemi, you need to build Siege Workshops all over the map. So those Siege Onagers don't have to travel anywhere. And just one of the big things in this game is going to be army composition. The Saracens, are they on their strongest army? No, they're making Arbalest. They need to be making Mameluke or even Heavy Camel to deal with the Paladin. That's what they should be doing. As well, they could make Siege Onager, and we don't see that. The no, Turks, they're no. making Cavalier. That's not the strongest army. Ethiopians, they're making Arbalest and Halberdier, which is, you know, even better for the Ethiopians, but they're not making any Siege. Meanwhile, for the other team, we have Siege Onager and Halb. Paladin, which is super strong. And then Arbalest for the Portuguese player, but those Bombard Cans will be stronger. I like the armor composition at this point from 2H. And I like them to be able to push back. Trade is going to be so hard to establish on this map because it is so open. So maybe we will see some trash units. Usually we don't see that so much in team games. No. No. And there we go. There's that trash I was talking about. You know. No. No. And in this middle area, perhaps there were some resources. I don't see too many mining camps. I guess that wasn't a big thing. I still like that center control for our 2H team. You see Jonathan will be able to help out a lot. Let's see a big hit. Oh, that was a great hit. And another one. That's okay. No. Yumi still needs to make two upgrades on a siege. He needs to make four or Celtica. And he needs to make the siege engineers upgrade. No. And with this game is going probably more important for the Fuhrer Celtica upgrade. Alright, this will be a nice cleanup on these archery ranges. Umbarkan's moving forward. I think they've got the Arcabus technology because those things can be moving pretty fast. Maybe not. Oh, interesting. Elite Shotel Warrior. Oh, my, my voice just cracked. <laughs> 24 years old, my voice should be cracking. So, shut the worry of being done. No. Hmm. I never. I don't like the Shuttle Warrior. I really don't. I just think it's a terrible, unique unit. No, no. But I guess we'll see how it does. Maybe I'll be proven wrong. No. God, that is annoying. And what are the Shotel Warriors going to counter? They'll do great against the Halberdiers. Better than making men at arms. One lonely men at arm here. I don't know how they do against Paladins. I feel like they'll do terrible. Yeah, they'll do terrible. No. No. Big force coming in from Pella. This is pretty decent. It's a pretty decent army. I like the Portuguese a lot. I think they're pr quite underrated. All these units cost less gold, and these Bombard Cannons are quite strong. Looks like they might get caught out of position by these Light Cavalry of Aquino. Aquino's really struggling on the gold. We see Elite Skirmisher and Light Cavalry in his army. Still nothing strong from the Turks player. I'm disappointed. 
The Turks have so many strong options. They have... Well, Janistri is not going to be great at this stage of the game, but they have Heavy Cavalry Archer. That's what I wanted to see. Or Heavy Camel would be good, too. We're going to see Heavy Camel. I think this game is slowing down a bit because... Well, players haven't had that much trouble establishing trade, to be quite honest. Look at this. 50 trade for a Portuguese player. No. no. The right number, right? No, no, I was wrong. 40 trade. But that's still a lot. But no trade from Yimmy. Interestingly, Yimmy's not going to make trade this game. It's weird. No, no. This should be another big win, especially with the siege here. Artillery being made. Not going to be a big impact right now. Where's the action? Where's the action? I'm looking for the action. I don't see anything happening on the bottom side. Scrolling around, but I don't see too much. Wolfgang is oh, pushing a little bit here. No. But not a hell of a lot going on there. Let's go to military point of view. Oh boy. That doesn't work too well. Unless there's mil no, there's not military all of them. So this is just showing units, I think. It's not necessarily all military. Oh! Only 15 military for Aquino. That's not too good. Yeah, I don't get how this military point of view works. This is Aquino's point of view, and it's only showing his enemy. No. No, no. So this army pushing in quite well. With new Rams, but they're not going to do a whole lot. I guess this is the area of primary focus this game. We even have derp on the top side. This explains why I don't see too, too much going on in the bottom. So derp and Idafix are going to help support Nikino, and they're going to try to push this back. And if they can, it might be game. Because they're getting close to closer and closer to the trade. As well, Akino doesn't have a whole lot of space to run. He's only got 100 villagers. No. Again, we just don't see the strongest armies from these players. All trash from Akino. It's not what you want to Saracens at all. No. No. And let's see if they're going to be able to take this fight. We have a lot of the army just sitting back here while these Hussars are doing some work. They might be able to take this fight. What happened to the camels? Oh, there's a big raid of the Paladin, so the camels have to move back. No, Kino dropping no. to 80 villagers. Oh, too handless. Is that the name of their team? That's what the H stands for. Possibly. Derp is pretty uncontested in this area. Where are the Paladins? I don't see no. the Paladins. No. This game is so hard to follow. So the whole map is like a it's like a fighting ground when normally you only see like a north and south side or two sides. No. So this area hasn't not much is going on. Need to see more siege from these players. We should have a ton of trade at this point. Yimmy's going to establish trade as well. A bumper towers coming in from Idafix. So this is kind of an interesting position. We have a lot of infrastructure here from Wolf Genghis in the middle of the map, but they're kind of being undermined. No. By Derp and Idafix. Now building more toward the south. Now we have a big raid from Derp. Because there's no army in this area. Talons are going to come back and they could clean all of this up. That'll be that'll be great. Great for the two handless team. And that's a great cleanup. One Husser in the back not doing a whole lot. Three castles here defending the trade. That's the best you can do. You can't actually wall this. And those skirmishers are just going to die. You don't want to be making trash this no. late in a, in a no. team game. They're no. just so weak. Kino needs to get his trade numbers up and needs to make something else. That's becoming such a struggle for him. I 
think... Oh man, if the Siege Auditor can attack those Skirmishers. Is it gonna attack the Skirmishers? It's gonna get a huge hit on the Skirmishers. The only thing slowing this down is gonna be Idafix's uh, Bumpark Towers, which have artillery. And now we have even Oregon Guns from Pella. That's the strongest army he can make as Portuguese. It could be Oregon Guns. Lunacy doesn't have enough trade. They won't be able to hold. 36, 38, 55. It's okay. Not too bad. 40, 80. No. I think it's enough trade. I mean, Akino definitely doesn't have enough. I think the problem is... I think they have enough trade, but they haven't made... Up to this stage, haven't made the, their ideal army composition. No. Because Akino, his army's just not going to do anything. I wonder what Akino has to be doing with his gold. Over his point of view. What is he spending his gold on? Where is he tributing his gold? He's really struggling this game. Let's check down at the bottom. And we see Bombard Towers pushing in. This is great. These Bombard Towers are such a huge asset for this team. I think the Portuguese get Bombard Towers too. This is a bright spot for the Lunacy team. They're not too far away from the trade. They really aren't. And these Bombard Towers won't go down anytime soon. But they'll have to somehow get through a few of these castles. More villagers coming forward. Oh, uh, is this game going to end anytime soon? Hello, look, is looking for the trade. This is good if you can actually get the skirmishers to do what they're supposed to do, which is attack skirmishers. We attack archers. Why are they going downhill? I don't know. They really shouldn't be downhill. They need to bring them back uphill. But regardless, it looks like those arbalists will get cleaned up. No. Hmm. Hmm. No. Once Wolfgang gets the full Paladin, it's GG. I don't know, he's had the Paladin upgrade upgraded for the last 30 minutes. He's very strong. Wolfgang is only on 50 villagers, but he's got a lot of trade, so I guess that doesn't matter. Okay, look at the populations. The populations for Lunacy look a lot better. Oh man, these Bumber Towers continue to push in. I don't see anything heavy to take down no. these castles. I mean, these Paladins will do great. No, no. On the top, Akito is finally pushing back. He's got a great population, even if it's only mostly trash. Now he's got Siege Rem, so I guess that's what he's spending his gold on. Making a few more upgrades. Looks like finally those tra that trade no. is going to get kicked in. But what the hell is Yemi doing? Yemi, make trade! You have no. eight trade cards. It's not the best. I think Lunacy is going to take this no. game. No. Akito's got a lot of momentum. I think if only Akito could make a stronger unit. Okay, Arbalest is going to be better than what he's been making previously. We do have Oregon Gun for 2H, uh, for the two handed team. So maybe they'll push things back. The trebuchets from Wolfgangs will clean up a lot of these uh, Umber Towers. Still, all the castles are up. And again, I still like the army composition of our two handless team. Now let's see what the Oregon guns can do. Akino was getting a little bit of strength, a little bit of momentum, and now I think he's going to get pushed back. Tons of siege. Two handless. Why do these Bumbar cannons not have... Um... I'm going to upgrade. Siege engineers would help the Oregon guns a lot too. Extra one range. That's a mystery. Oh, there's even Bumbar towers. Or at least one. There's one Bombard Tower in the trade. At one Bombard Tower is not a big deal. These Oregons will be able to destroy the Arbalest. No. And as 
long as these bumper cannons have arc bust, they'll be able to take out the Onager super easy. Keto finally make the Siege Onager. Oh, gonna be some big shots. And so on, Siege Engineers. All upgrades that should have been made a lot earlier. The bumper cannons remain. Now the Shotel Warriors are going to try to do some raiding. They should be fairly good raiders, as long as they're not in the castles. And this is a big raid! A big trade raid for Lunacy! I keep wanting to think that um, the two handless team will win, because I like their army composition so much better. But Derp has just gone... Uh, he's just been great this game. I think MVP of this game. Although that's definitely... Most of that has been uh, in the late game. Wasn't very good early on, but uh, certainly he's come into his own late game. Look at that KD ratio, 1,000 to almost uh, 750. And this trade rate's going to be great. These are Ethiopian crossbows. They're firing super fast, killing every single trade card that passes. No. Maybe that'll be the end of the game? going to get cleaned up. That was a big trade rate. And for Pella, just a few, missing a few upgrades, missing Siege Engineers. And needs more Bombard Cannons. No. Pella now making Cavalier? I don't think he needs it. I really don't. I think just more Bombard Cannons would take this. And GG, right there. That trade raid is going to decide the game. Wow, what a crazy game. I, I, I thought this whole game that Lunacy was going to lose this. Because I just didn't like their army compositions. Ikino was not making gold units for a good amount of time. We had the Turks player. The strongest unit in this game was Heavy Camel. But Derp was awesome this game. Just Ethiopian Crossbow and Halberdier. Uh, and then those Bumbert Towers going through the middle finally were productive and gave a great trade raid. Now trade numbers fairly low for our two handless team. And wow, what a great game. Idafix is going to take that one. And this was the map, Plateau. Hope you enjoyed it. Look at the achievements. Best KD ratio for Derp. Great game from him. And just timeline. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed today's cast. It's going to be a shorter stream today as I have to get going early. I'll be on tomorrow, same time. No, not tomorrow. <laughs> oh, God. So if you don't know already, I cast Friday around this time every single week. And I'm going to continue that. So please be on next week. You can follow the Discord channel below where you can see our stream schedule. Later on, as you can see in the title, 23 GMT. That is seven hours from now. We'll have Mr. GPN cast Arena Games of the Week. And usually on Wednesdays, we have Nova casting. So, hope you enjoyed. Please follow the Discord below. And my name is Nobody, and we'll see you next time. I'll host someone else. If you have any questions, I'll stay around the chat for a few minutes. Donnie is uh, talking a lot uh, when he's not playing. Donnie is talking a lot when he's playing. So I think they have the best communication right now. I think Tato will guide Mara when they are Imper Imperial Age. Right now, it's such an... Okay, just go for a boom and later we will fight against each other. Yeah. Do we maybe want to listen to them? Uh, we can do this, but I still think they won't tell, uh, uh, um, talk that much. Let's hear it. Let's hear it. But it's from the other side of the bay of the map, so it's kind of all right. Okay. Well, the way I know him, he will probably try to like harass and not go for the middle. You know, he will yeah. look for fights. He will try to raid. Yeah. 